faced the competition, and we broke through. Olay's Retinol 24 Complex hydrates better than the $100 retinol cream. Visibly smoother, brighter skin in just 24 hours. Olay Retinol 24. Tomorrow on E.T., we're checking in with Halle Berry talking quarantine mom life and her fitness obsession. I am all in. Plus, the latest on Ben Affleck's romance with his quarantine bay, what the couple is celebrating now. Speaking of... Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -ba -ba -ba. We're opening up the E.T. vault for Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson's 32nd anniversary. Tomorrow on E.T. This year marks the 35th anniversary of We Are the World, and some are saying the time is right for a new recording. So I asked Michael Jackson's son Prince all about that and how he is helping feed the less fortunate with his Heal LA Foundation. Happening now. Some local leaders seeing big jumps in both favorability and job approval in the latest Bear Facts results. We dig in the numbers and what might be behind them. The number of remote hearings at the courthouse continuing to grow, why one judge says that's creating a serious problem. Next. Coming up, a look behind the scenes of the Alternative Care Center at the Freeman Coliseum. We show you what type of services will be provided and when it will be activated. And the transition is underway. The gusty north winds today dried out our air, low humidity in place, but that lower humidity means some cooler mornings. We'll talk about that and let you know when the humidity returns. Coming right up. There's never a good time for your appliances to break down, especially right now. The safe way to get your appliances repaired during this pandemic. The News at 5 starts right now. A third resident is dead from the Floorsville Veterans Home. That is our top story this evening. Yeah, that brings the total number of deaths at the Frank M. Tejeda State Veterans Home to three. Six residents remain hospitalized tonight. At least 14 residents and eight staff members have tested positive at the facility. All staff and residents have been tested except for 10 staff members and officials say these individuals will not be allowed back until they have tested negative. Another VIA bus operator tests positive for COVID-19, bringing the total to seven operators and one administrative employee. For the latest case, VIA officials say the operator last worked on April 24th. After the operator stated ex started experiencing mild symptoms, VIA officials say the buses the operator used had been sanitized daily and cleaned. For the routes the operator traveled, you can head to our website, ksat.com. Toyota vehicle production being postponed for a week. Production set to begin next week before the announcement was made. Vehicle production is expected to resume now the week of May 11th. A spokesperson for Toyota says they intend to gradually resume operation in compliance with federal health guidelines and local and state ordinances. No details were given, though, about why they decided to postpone this. We are getting a look now at the alternative care facility at Freeman Coliseum. It's a facility that will be used in the event of a surge of demand for hospital beds beyond what hospitals can now offer. Tiffany Huertas tells us how the facility will operate and how they'll be able to decontaminate thousands of masks every day. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says the alternative care facility will not be for COVID-19 patients. It will be for hospital patients who are recovering from surgeries or minor injuries. The facility currently has 80 beds. Chief Hood says there will be medical staff at this center if it activates. The facility would also follow the same guidelines of a hospital. Chief Hood says they will open this facility when hospitals reach capacity. So the plan for this would be for people that would not need to be in, in an ICU. They'd be in a step down situation. So we'd have nursing staffs here. We would have the nursing assistants. We'd have the cleaning uh, facilities. We'd have a doctor here. At another building at the Freeman Coliseum, there are decontamination units. Chief Hood says it will be used to clean masks and can decontaminate about 80,000 masks a day. Chief Hood says the facility is funded by the state. He hopes the facility is not used at all. Reporting from the Freeman Coliseum, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. A team from the company Battelle is going to be in charge of decontaminating those masks. They are currently four units that will be up and running by this weekend. And we just heard from Fire Chief Charles Hood. We continue to keep track of how many first responders are testing positive for COVID-19. Here are the latest numbers we have. Six San Antonio police officers have tested positive. 
five personnel remain in quarantine. As for San Antonio firefighters, six have tested positive, 17 remain under quarantine. As for the latest numbers in Bear County, we have a total of 1,307 confirmed cases. The death toll is at 44. 56 people are in the hospital. 574 people have recovered from the illness, but there are still hundreds of active cases. Quote, there are definitely some serious issues, end quote. That's what the administrative court judge is saying as the number of remote hearings dictated by the pandemic continues to grow. Paul Venema with a look at the problems and at the future of those remote hearings. Pleas are among the issues resolved during these remote hearings conducted through a program called Zoom, but they're not always efficient. Yesterday we did a Zoom plea with a guy that was on bond. That typically takes five minutes in the courtroom. It took us about an hour to do it. With the moratorium on jury service in place, hearings and pleas are the only options for resolving a case. The fact that we have we don't have juries as an option, how does that impact your docket? There really is no real um, incentive for certain types of cases to work out without the idea that there's going to be a jury trial. That means cases are simply reset and resetting any case creates a big problem. Well, the dockets have been impacted pretty significantly. Um, I know a week ago, each district court, there's 10 criminal district courts, each court was over um, 100 cases beyond its dockets. That leaves over 1,000 cases pending in just the criminal district courts. Still, Ron Hell said, remote hearings are more than likely here to stay. We're going to figure out some way to ensure that these remote proceedings are probably going to be a permanent part of the system. Paul Venema, Case at 12 News. As local officials grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic, residents seem to be in favor of the way they are handling it. The latest Bear Facts Case at Revoir report poll shows that a big bump in favorability and job approval ratings are in for Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf. Garrett Berger talks to a local political expert about what that could mean. From approval ratings in the 50s in February to the 70s in April, respondents to the Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll are viewing Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Judge Nelson Wolf in a rosier light. The likely reason for those jumps shouldn't surprise anybody. It's the issue that's hanging over this entire city, the COVID-19 pandemic. Folks want to see leaders leading. <laughs> they want to see leaders making uh, decisive, authoritative decisions and justifying them. Haywood Sanders, a professor of public administration at UTSA, says it's not uncommon in public emergencies for officials to appear much more active and visible. The mayor and judge, for instance, have both issued numerous local orders and have been providing televised nightly briefings on the pandemic response. They simply look authoritative and in control and in a functioning as as public leaders should in a case like this. And in turn, he says that will give them more latitude as they continue to make decisions on how to handle COVID-19. I think at this point, the public's prepared to listen to them, hear them, and pay attention to their recommendations. And the way they've worked closely together, he says, has helped show this is not a political issue. This is a matter of keeping this community safe, uh, keeping those infection and death totals down. Uh, as low as humanly possible. Uh, and they, they, they deserve respect and applause for that. They do indeed. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And don't forget, in just one hour, we're going to be holding a virtual town hall where we discuss these results with the Bear Facts team. There will be, uh, they'll be joined, that is, by Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf. You can watch the first half hour right here on KSAT 12 during the news at 6 p.m. And after the mayor and the judge give their update is when it'll begin. Then from 7 to 8, we will be streaming the discussion online at KSAT.com. After meat producers and farmers sounded the alarm about breakdowns in the food chain, President Donald Trump signed an executive order demanding processing plants stay open. Now employee unions worry about the risk to worker health. This is a top doctor on the White House Coronavirus Task Force warns we could see another powerful round of infections this fall or winter. Karen Kafa brings us the very latest from Washington. Karen. 
Fauci giving that warning, Steve, as a number of states weigh their reopenings and take st steps to open more businesses. This as the U.S. economy showed a contraction during the first three months of the year as states had those stay at home orders in place. Well, it's creating some very tough decisions for companies and their workers. Fear, anger, confusion from some meat industry employees after President Trump signed an executive order compelling processing plants to stay open. He is putting the workers at risk. Uh, he, um, this is reckless and irresponsible of him to do this. The White House says the order ensures the food supply chain stays intact, a response to meat executives and farmers who say they may have to euthanize millions of animals due to plant closures. Right now we're definitely in survival mode. The debate comes as data from January to March shows the United States economy shrank for the first time in six years. We had the strongest economy anywhere in the world, and I hope we're going to be back there again. Despite the blow to bank accounts, a majority of Americans say relaxing restrictions too soon is a bad idea. A poll released Wednesday shows 65 percent of Americans think employees should not return to work without more widespread testing. 80 percent don't think you should eat inside a restaurant, and 91 percent say it's a bad idea to attend a sporting event. We think it's a top real. doctor on the White House Coronavirus Task Force says the U.S. is almost certain to see another round of the virus later this year. If we are unsuccessful or prematurely try to open up, it could be a rebound to get us right back in the same boat. It's not going to disappear from the planet. And Fauci does see that second round in the fall and winter months as pretty much inevitable, but says that Americans already know what they need to do to mitigate it. The question is, will reopenings that occur too quickly uh, uh, result in some sort of summer surge that would put Americans in a bad situation heading into the later months of the year? Stephen Ursula. Karen Kafa live in Washington. Thank you, Karen. All right, looking outside, we've got bright sunshine and the smoke that was in our air yesterday has been swept away, along with the humidity as well. We've got drier, less humid air, and it's very pleasant outside. Feels good out there on our Wednesday. We did have some showers and storms east of San Antonio early this morning. The line that was marching southward really fizzled right before it got to Bear County, but some of our eastern counties, including Lavaca County, Hallettsville area, Gonzales County, and even up near New Braunfels, we had rain, rainfall estimates of over half an inch. So that was good for some folks east of San Antonio. Not everybody cashed in on that, though. Right now, weather watchers in the 80s. Isn't this nice? 89 in Del Rio, whereas yesterday in Del Rio, they had a record high temperature of 102. Right now in Mico, 87 degrees. Temperatures falling off quickly with the dry air and clear sky. Less breeze later on tonight and get ready for some cooler mornings. We'll talk about that and when the humidity returns coming up. Thank you, Adam. Today, San Antonio Food Bank employees and volunteers surprised with lunch by Papa John's. The free lunch was a part of the company's Feed Your Family, Feed Your Community program. They received 50 pizzas and various drink options as a way to say thank you for all the hard work. This is just a small gesture of our gratitude to the food bank and all the amazing work that they're doing. And it's never enough, but we always are down to support and help out in any way possible. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, the demand for the food bank has rapidly increased. For our wish list Wednesday, we're joining forces with our KSAC community partners to help the Ronald McDonald House Charities. The nonprofit has been keeping families close for more than 35 years. Right now, they're not hosting families, but they are still in need of donations of essential items. We're grateful for anything that anybody would like to donate, whether it's cleaning supplies, um, non-perishable food items, monetary donations, paper items. You can drop off donations at the front door of the Ronald McDonald House located at 4803 Sid Katz Drive. You can also donate money online or shop from their Amazon wish list. Still ahead, having broken appliances is never an ideal situation, but it's more of a challenge if it happens during the pandemic. We're going to show you how to make it through the crisis when an essential appliance breaks right now.
dishwasher or your oven breaks. Typically, you weigh whether it's better to report. with some advice on handling a breakdown. Melissa Collins' fridge broke down at the worst time. Having the refrigerator is definitely a necessity, like just even in regular day-to-day -day life, but even more so now. For now, she's using a mini fridge, but it's not a sustainable solution. Not having a working refrigerator in the house, it's like, oh, well, now we're out of milk and we have to go to the store. If it's something that really is going to have an impact on your family's ability to live safely and healthy, then you really do have a case for calling someone in. Companies like Sears, The Home Depot, Lowe's, GE and LG say they've instructed their technicians or third party providers to follow CDC recommendations when making house calls. That includes a mask, hand washing and social distancing. If you're using an independent or local repair service, ask what precautions they're taking. If you're handy, your manufacturer's customer service line may be able to give you DIY tips or try the website repairclinic.com. If the repair just isn't worth it and you need to buy a new essential appliance, the process will likely be different. If you'd rather skip the store, shop online. The Home Depot and Lowe's have on-site delivery and offer curbside pickup or delivery. Check delivery time before you click buy because there could be a wait. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Take a live look outside with Sky 12 over the Pearl. It's a nice view. It's a little also, you know, usually that grassy area. And it's filled is with full people. of kids and, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's empty. I guess it's a good thing. Social distancing yeah. work right there. Yeah. Let's look at the plus side of that. Yes. Is it's it's better for the grass. It can recover for a little bit. It's a beautiful day though. It is gorgeous day. A lot of folks just outside in their yards taking advantage of it. And we had that cold front move through earlier this morning behind it. Some gusty winds. We had some rain, as I mentioned earlier, for some of our eastern counties. And overall, we're going to be comfortable here for a couple of days with the lack of humidity. We'll jump into those details in a second and talk about when the heat and the mugginess returns. But let's look at our area lake levels. Yes, we could use some more rainfall, not just to put a bigger dent in the drought, but even to give some of our lakes a splash of water. Look at Medina, 71% full, so that's 13 feet below the conservation pool. And that's 13 feet lower than this time last year. Canyon Lake. As usual, in a better situation, 94% full. That's three feet below the conservation pool and three feet lower than this time last year. That cold front hit and brought some gusty winds earlier today, especially this morning. New Braunfels gusted to 46. Gonzales gusted to 43 miles per hour. And in San Antonio, we got into the upper 30s for those wind gusts. Right now, we've got a steady north northeasterly wind at 10 to 15. Still some slightly higher gusts, but this wind will really, really pump the brakes over the next couple of hours. And we're looking at basically a calm night tonight. So wind not a factor anymore. Look how dry the air is. Dew points in the 30s and 40s. There's that crisp air. I, I almost call it fall like air that's in place right now. That lack of humidity and that's a huge difference compared to what we had yesterday. I mean, dew points 20 to 30 degree. 20 to 30 degrees lower than yesterday. So it's comfortable out there. You're not going to feel the mugginess until check this out until we get into the weekend on Saturday. Humidity's back and it's going to stay in place through a good portion of next week. All right, let's talk temperatures. Not as hot as yesterday. Del Rio 10 degrees cooler now than 24 hours ago at 92 degrees. 90 in Carrizo Springs, 79 in Fredericksburg with low humidity and sunshine. What a day in Fredericksburg, New Braunfels, you're at 86. So let's talk about tomorrow morning. We've got clear sky, a calm wind and dry air. So ideal radiational cooling temperature is going to fall off quickly and actually will be below average tomorrow morning. 7 a.m. We're expecting widespread 50s from 53 in Hondo to 59 in Del Rio, 55 in Pleasanton, 55 in and around a good portion of San Antonio, but Bernie about 53 along with Timberwood Park and Lavernia at 53 early tomorrow morning. So we'll have a little bit of a chill in the air, you know, compared to what's average for this time of year, the next couple of mornings. All right, let's talk about our weather pattern. Just some high thin clouds lingering overhead. Some of you may get some good color at your sunset this evening, especially south of San Antonio, but the main action, you well, know, 
basically far to the northeast of us with this huge dip in the upper level flow over the eastern third of the nation. That's where the good moisture is. I wish we could tap into some of that, but we can't. Instead, we've got our old, uh, I hesitate to call it a friend, our old foe, the Big Blue H, which doesn't bring us any rainfall, but in this case, it's going to bring us some nice weather over the next couple of days. All right, the next few days will be beautiful with a lack of humidity. 50s in the morning tomorrow, only mid 80s for the afternoon. A gentle breeze throughout the day, light and variable wall to wall sunshine. Very similar into Friday will be about 57 in the morning, near 90 in the afternoon, sunny, low humidity. Then the humidity returns this weekend and I wish with that humidity could be some rainfall. But unfortunately, it's just going to be hotter, muggier, and well, almost just as sunny. Temperatures well into the 90s as we get into the end of the weekend and early next week. Look at that forecast. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. The, the draft was last week. The Cowboys are not done dealing, though. Greg. No, signing another veteran quarterback. So that room, that position room is going to be quite full, doing yeah. a good job of filling in after Byron Jones went to Miami during free agency. When we come back, who did they sign? We will show you. And a bunch of local athletes from not only the college ranks, but the pro as well, getting the editor to help the food bank. Got it for you coming up. We are starting a fundraiser to raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. I hear that's a huge, huge need right now. Um, I just want to encourage you guys who are watching this to, to donate to our fundraiser. Local athletes such as the Rams' Malcolm Brown from both the pro and college ranks are launching a fundraiser for the San Antonio Food Bank and Big Board Sports, but first. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys have signed veteran cornerback Darrell Worley to add to their stable of defensive backs and include recent draft picks Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama and Reggie Robinson from Tulsa. Worley, who is a 6'1", 215 pounds, played for the Raiders last year. After signing as a free agent in 2018, was able to finish with an interception, fumble recovery, eight passes defense, and 15. 58 tackles, 51 solo. Now remember, he signed with the Raiders after he was released by the Eagles at the NFL Network reported he was arrested after he was found passed out in his vehicle blocking the highway. In his career, Worley has five career interceptions, which is more than any Dallas cornerback since Terrence Newman had four back in just 2011. While the NBA has informed teams that they can reopen their training facilities one week from this Friday in an apparent attempt to try and restart their season, former Spur, now Warriors head coach Steve Kerr says they are operating as if their season is over. Kerr made those comments during a Zoom interview with the University of San Francisco last night. Since when the season was suspended back in March, the Warriors own the worst record in the NBA of 15 and 50. It feels like the end of the season for our team. It's just, and it just does. And we don't know anything officially. Uh, there's still a chance the league could ask us to come back and uh, and play some games. But given what we went through this season with all the injuries and the the tough uh, tough record, uh, it's been more of the case of you know we're staying in touch with guys, but everybody is just sort of assuming that. You know, this is this is kind of it. We're not going to be involved much anymore. And the Spurs, who are just four games out of the playoff picture, may have a different view depending on where or if the season resumes. Anything helps. The goal is 50,000, but I easily feel like easily we can get past that. Now count the Longhorns and former Steel star Caden Stearns as part of the local athletes raising money to help feed those in need at SanAntonioFoodBay.org or tackle COVID-19. As you can see, Caden, by the way, was out at the Bryce Strong birthday party yesterday, the parade, and now he's helping raise money for the food bank here in San Antonio. They're in dire need of our funds and food as we speak right now to help as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, all you have to do is look at the long lines at their food events. Yeah, huge demand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.